This program lineup is brought to you by Vision Express. KUAM TV 8, first on Guam. KUAM News Headlines are presented by Calvo's Insurance, protecting Micronesia for 85 years. Matson and the Adahi Itano program. Apply at matson.com. Cars Plus, Guam's automotive leader in sustainability and electric vehicles. Learn more at carsplusguam.com. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on KUAM News Primetime, three officers under investigation in separate cases, one involving excessive force, the others illicit drugs. The prison director speaks on the issue. Plus, who will lead the Guam Regional Transit Authority amid a government corruption case? Senators looking for answers today during a oversight hearing. I'm with Suki Hariyama with the details. NMI and Guam leaders convene on Saipan for a regional meeting. I'm Tomas Manglonia with the full story as they discuss issues related to travel and tourism. Half a day and good evening. Welcome to KUAM News Primetime. I'm Nick Delgado. And I'm Destiny Cruz. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. Well, Department of Corrections officers under the microscope after one is accused of attacking inmates. That plus two other DEPCOR officers apparently testing positive for illicit drug use. The prison director is unable to say much, calling it a personal matter. But he makes clear in an interview with KUAM that any of his staff caught breaking policy or law will be held accountable. A Department of Corrections officer admits he used excessive force on inmates while on duty. KUAM confirms the officer, who we are not naming for now, revealed in 2015 he, along with a fellow officer, forced two inmates to fight each other in the prison yard for their entertainment. The officer telling staff then that the injured inmate, quote, fell. Around that same time frame, the officer brought another inmate out to the yard after being called out to fight before punching the inmate and causing him to fall to the ground. The incident was never reported to higher-ups, and the inmate was not taken to the prison infirmary for treatment. Then, in 2022, that same officer admitted he restrained an inmate for not being compliant, punching the prisoner at least a dozen times, resulting in the inmate needing medical treatment. The incident at the time was not reported to supervisors. The officer, only recently investigated by DEPCOR Internal Affairs, got a slap on the wrist with a letter of reprimand for endangering the life of prisoners. DEPCOR Director Fred Berdalio unable to speak to the specifics of the case. Our Inmates being treated like animals there, are officers attacking or assaulting who they're supposed to be keeping watch of to protect them and guard them? What would yeah. you say to that? Yeah, and uh, of course, you know, um, the officers since I've come on board have been very professional, you know, and they they know that uh, they have to hold up to their code of ethics, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, they, they're, they're, they're supposed to be here to safeguard the inmates, not uh, hurt the inmates in any way or harm them in any way or violate the law. Separately, one officer was given a verbal warning while another brief suspension after both tested positive for using illicit drugs. Berdalio says his staff work with the Attorney General's office before he serves adverse action. The director also questioning how KUAM obtained the details of those investigations. My assumption, Nick, is that someone in the department got a hold of either internal affairs documents or a personal record officer's documents or a documents of the testing that they weren't supposed to have and provide it to you, Nick, the media. And, uh, you know, for it, you know, it to reach the news for the public. And but isn't the greater concern, though, about what's happening there at the prison, about the officers signing on, swearing to 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 protect and do their duty in a drug free workplace rather than force information getting out of, to of, me. Of, of, of course we all the officers know you know and this is this has happened since safe harbor was taken away we are committed to do random drug testing uh by our department right to detect those that may be under that are under the influence you know of yeah. not only just illegal drugs but 
you know, even legal drugs. The investigations coming to light as DEPCOR officers share concern that the so-called bad apples in the department are going unpunished. If any of our employees feel there's any kind of corruption going on, they can and they want whistleblower protection, they're welcome to do that. A man accused of raping three girls gets 25 years in prison and faces deportation. 57-year-old Ambrosio Tevez was recently sentenced before presiding judge Alberto Lamarena in Superior Court. The girls were each 11 and 12 at the time of the abuse, which occurred over a period of nine years. Prosecutors noting the girls expressed how Tevez robbed them of their childhood, adding how the abuse will impact them for the rest of their lives. Tevez, convicted of first-degree criminal sexual conduct, is now on the deportation list to be sent back to the Philippines. The Attorney General working with federal immigration authorities and the victims to decide when he should be deported. A passenger who arrived on a flight at the AV Wampat International Airport was greeted by law enforcement after being caught with more than 60 pills containing meth and MDMA. 29-year-old Darian Michelle Latham is charged with possession of a Schedule II and Schedule IV controlled substances. Custom agents inspected her bag, finding Adderall, ecstasy, gabap ecstasy, gabapentin, and Xanax. She allegedly admitted to bringing Molly, Xanax, and Adderall with her on the plane before being placed under arrest. While well, the search for new leadership for the agency responsible for public transportation is at an impasse. This as Guam Regional Transit Authority officials embroiled in an ongoing government corruption case brought against them by the Attorney General's office and the AG's withdrawal of legal representation. Mitsuki Hiriyama has the story. The search for a permanent executive manager to lead the Guam Regional Transit Authority is being stalled by a lack of board members to make a quorum and by a lack of interest amid legal woes. That's what GRTA's interim executive manager and Public Works Deputy Director Linda Ibanez told senators during a legislative oversight hearing Wednesday. Unfortunately, because we are in a limbo with the AG's legal advice and support for the agencies, nobody wants to take that on. This as five GRTA officials are embroiled in an ongoing government corruption case brought against them by the Attorney General's office. This includes former Interim Executive Manager Richard E. Bonas, Certifying Officer Jennifer Badar Cruz, then Board Chair Alejo Sablon, and Board Members in Alahan Mayor Anthony Chargaloff and Hagen Mayor Kevin Sesuiko. As KUAM reported, prosecutors allege officials knew that Ibanez illegally held the top management position without the requisite college degree. The case has since been sealed from the public in November. Currently, there are only two members remaining on the board, Chargaloff and Sesuiko. Four is needed for a quorum. We are reaching out to youth members, we are reaching out to members um, advocating disability, but as unfortunately, uh, they declined being a member. The lack of quorum also delaying the public transportation agency's access to nearly $5 million of federal grant monies. Senator Sabina Perez calling on GRTA to prioritize their efforts in finding new board members. This is such an important board to get GRTA operational considering potentially there are federal grants on the line um, and other things you know to uh, to also um, be responsive to the writers of our community who really rely on this for you know their livelihoods. Mitsuki Hariyama, KUAM News. Legislation that would provide equitable assistance for property renters to those who need it went up for a public hearing today. Input on the measure ranged with businessman Monte McDowell sharing an example from the pandemic about how aid for renters impacted landlords. The renter was allowed to, to forego paying the landlord for a month, two months, three months, uh, and then they were legally, I guess, legally obligated to catch up at some point. So we would go out to collect rent. They said, no, I don't have to pay. Buy and they get in their brand new car, you know, because money was just flowing during the pandemic to people uh, that were not businesses and took great advantage of the situation. And so we, our mortgage doesn't go away for those of us that own property. Uh, so when they don't pay us, it does great harm. And, and I'm not sure everybody realizes that. But And you can watch today's hearing on the legislature's channel on YouTube. Time for a quick break. Keep it here. You're watching KUAM, your leader in local news.
Rooted in the community since 1995, Kmart is here to serve you 24 hours a day. From essentials to fill your pantry to delightful treats, our selection of groceries have everything you need to stock your kitchen with love. Step directly into style with the latest fashion finds in shoes and clothing for the family at unbeatable prices. Turn your living space into a dream home with our unparalleled selection of home goods. Illuminate your shopping experience and brighten your budget every week with our blue light specials. These specials are a testament to our commitment to offering the biggest variety for the best value. Discover a world where quality and savings meets convenience. Kmart is your one-stop shop where every visit is an adventure. Shop smart and save big at Kmart, your Guam shopping destination. Last year, I learned that my baby Kaya had a serious medical condition. I needed to go off island for an emergency procedure. We needed a passport to get her to Manila. That would take weeks. I was devastated. I called the congressman's office. I want to thank the office of Congressman James Moylan because they were able to get Kaya's passport in a few days. Today, my baby is healthy and will be soon be celebrating another birthday. If you or your family need assistance with passports, please contact my office at 671-922-6673. Welcome back to Primetime. There's a renewed regional push to add the Philippines to the Guam CNMI Visa Waiver Program. Guam and CNMI leaders are meeting on Saipan this week to discuss the efforts and solutions to inner island travel issues. Regional correspondent Tomas Mangotnia reports. The Association of Mariana Islands Mayors, Vice Mayors and elected Municipal Council members will convene on Saipan this week. KUAM sat down with Guam Visitors Bureau President and former Guam Governor Carl Gutierrez who arrived on Saipan Wednesday. He's meeting with NMI Governor Arnold Palacios, Lieutenant Governor David Apatang, and Mariana's Visitors Authority Managing Director Chris Conception. This Friday, he will speak to Guam and CNMI leaders about the Visa Waiver Program. They asked me if they could come here and speak uh, about the Philippines, uh, Guam, CNMI Visa Waiver. Uh, but not only that, but also into some tourism aspects of, of the uh, of, of the that visa waiver coming into effect if if it comes into effect. The meeting comes as leaders on Guam and the NMI have welcomed the idea that requires Department of Homeland Security approval. A resolution supporting the effort is moving through the Congress of the Philippines. This is our strategy. The U.S. continue to take up more space and land and areas in the Philippines. They're over up to nine bases already they're building. And if there's one thing that they can ask, you know, it's not going to hurt. Guam, CNMI, only visa. And where are they going to go from here? They can't get on a plane to go to the United States mainland. And so it's a pretty much a done deal that they're going to either overstay on Saipan or Rota or Guam, but we would find them. And we don't believe that there will be any overstays. He said Guam's tourism industry is recovering. Hopefully, um, uh, by the end of September, September 30, this fiscal year, that we would hit 60% of pre-COVID numbers. Those pre-COVID numbers was 1.6 plus million. Gutierrez explained that Guam should be able to share the same markets that islands in Micronesia seek. The regional talks will also include potential plans to push U.S. Congress to exempt the islands from federal cabotage laws, allowing foreign airlines to provide low-cost inter-island travel for residents too. I think the big issue is to, to, to stand as one voice to get that cabotage going so that people, foreign carriers can come through here, go to Guam, go to Palau, go to FSM and, or to Marshalls. So that's one thing. But in the meantime, uh, how do we, uh, how do we uh, share resources between, let's say, Rhoda and Guam, Rhoda being less than 40 miles away. Uh, as, uh, one airline has about, I think, six aircraft, uh, eight passenger aircraft. So we're trying to figure out how to make uh, Rhoda a Guam uh, optional tour. And uh, so we're working on that very closely with the mayors. Tomas Manglonia, KUAM News, Saipan. The Guam Department of Education's Head Start program is seemingly 
out of hot water with the feds. The Office of Head Start handing down its official follow-up report entailing good news. Getting a head start on success. The Guam Department of Education's Head Start program receiving official word from the feds earlier than expected that it addressed all the deficiencies noted in the Office of Head Start's monitoring reports back in March of last year. Angelina LaPay, acting director of Guam DOE's Head Start program, spearheading the progress. We were all just very happy and relieved and um, felt validated that all of our hard work had paid off. That hard work resulting in a thumbs up from the feds in previously deficient areas with active supervision, background checks and ensuring facilities are free from pollutants, hazards and toxins checked off as corrected. That focus on ongoing monitoring for oversight and correction really supported um, us uh, resolving all of the other areas. LaPay adding that um, under the, the pressure of a 90-day countdown, lead testing of the waters and paint in schools was conducted and cleared. Staff and interns completed criminal background checks, including fingerprinting with the FBI, and fencing was put up for staff to monitor children in safe outdoor play areas. And we're working right now on a playground improvement plan, which is currently um, the bid is still being reviewed by the Office of the Attorney General. Meantime, LaPay says this feat could not have been done without the help of so many. All of these people stepped up to ensure that Head Start can be around for the next generation of children who are in need of our services. A feeling of gratitude Guam Education Board Chair Dr. Mary Okada echoes following the positive outcome. This took a whole effort, not just uh, the Head Start Department, but all of the Head Start centers, uh, the team from facilities and maintenance, and of course, you know, of course, with the support of the superintendent and his administration. Making waves in Riverside, California, is a man with Guam roots sharing his passion for parkour with the collective movements and outdoor parkour program for kids and adults. I can see you doing it all across the set right here, too. Oh, parkour. Yeah. <laughs> Jonah Guitar first chats it up with owner and head coach Dylan Titano. Since 2018, a park on Chicago Avenue in Riverside, California has been the place for the Collective Movements, a program that offers an array of ninja-style classes, such as parkour, free running, and even breakdancing. Head coach and founder Dylan Titano explains how his interest in parkour just fell into his lap in high school. For some reason, every time we had a video project, my friend would always just do flips over benches and like off of walls and shoulder rolls and all kinds of crazy stuff. And so I asked him, I was like, hey, how do I do that? What is it? And, uh, and it looks really cool. And where did you learn? And he gave me all of the information. And after that, it was just kind of like, I'm pretty sure this is what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life. So what is parkour? Taitono says, although most kids know what it is, it's their parents who don't. So he explains it to them in a couple of ways. Do you know the Marvel movies, like how they do uh, flips and twists off the cars? And uh, and typically their answer is yes. And I'll be like, I teach them how to do that. And then from there, I'll be like, does your kid jump on the couches and like jump as high as he can and then on the floor? And they go, yeah. And I go, that's kind of like what parkour is, except I teach them how to do it safely so their injuries are a little less likely. With about 100 students currently, the response has been overwhelmingly positive. I was doing things that are a little different in public at the park that it would be um, like not, not well received by some of the other parents at the park. But that has not been the case at all. And despite being hard at work with the business, excitement is definitely in the air because he, along with his mom, will be coming to Guam in July for the 80th Liberation Festivities. So that's been my number one goal this year is to uh, take her out to Guam because I don't think she's been there since she was like four or five when my grandma moved away. But it's also a big deal for Titano, whose visit will be his first. I'm learning about the culture. I'm doing my best to, to learn the language. And it's been a um, very rewarding, very, very good for, for me as like in my growth to learn more about our roots and 
and where we and where I come from and where my mom comes from and so uh, I'm I'm so excited to head out to Guam and with that excitement comes the opportunity to share his talent with the island community if anyone wants to reach out to me my Instagram is at Dylan Titano and uh, I would love to work something out and kind of give a piece of like my culture to our culture. And I think that would be a really fun way for me to get to know the community on island and a really cool way to um, give back to the community. And I think that could be a lot of fun. Jonah Gancharfris, KM News. Now for a look at your world at home. Here's a bright and sunny view captured from the beachside at Hoshino Resorts Rizunare. Troy Palamalu Safety, a.k.a. The Quiet Storm. Troy's seen more out of the corners of his cold steel eyes than most mortal men have seen straight on. The last thing an offense would witness? A fury of flowing mane incoming at high speed. Hey! Cat-like quickness and supernatural instincts like Troy's only come once in a lifetime. And oh, how grateful we are that they came in ours. No one made the beloved burg of Pittsburgh feel quite as safe as this safety. The Hyundai Tucson with advanced safety and tech because even safeties could use a little more safety themselves. Cantina Chicken Crispy Taco isn't just a late night taco, it's a seasoned and slow roasted chicken taco that pairs nicely with the new avocado verde salsa at any time. Introducing the new Cantina Chicken Crispy Taco, only at Taco Bell. The Cantina Chicken Burrito isn't just for late night, because it keeps it light with slow roasted shredded chicken and finely shredded purple cabbage in a freshly grilled tortilla that's not shredded. Introducing the new Cantina Chicken Burrito, only at Taco Bell. We start with her and her local business. We start with them celebrating 30 years. We start with big. Welcome to Deuce Tani. How are you sushi today? Keep doing your best. Congratulations. Small and growing businesses. We start with global connections and make them local. At GTA, we start with your business.
you want some milk? Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment, and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. Our new McDonald's Spicy Chicken McNuggets are just the right amount of spicy. A small to medium Sprite kind of spicy. Uh, let's get a McFlurry after this kind of spicy. But if you get the mighty hot sauce, it's a napkins up for foreheads now kind of spicy. Uh, this came from McDonald's kind of spicy? Because our spicy chicken McNuggets breaded in tempura and made with cayenne are just the right amount of spicy. Unless you remember what I said about the sauce. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Saturday, do not make any plans this Saturday, except in the afternoon, 4 o'clock, be down at Chamor Village because we are having an autism community together. 2K, 5K, run, walk for autism. Please make sure to register. Please make sure to show up. I don't even have to ask if you're going to have a good time because it is absolutely amazing. Shout out to our friends at Autism Community Together for helping raise awareness about autism on our island and making this amazing event where you can help. On Saturday the 27th, a week from this Saturday, our friends at GFD are having the fire engine pull for autism. That starts at 4.30 in the afternoon, and that is at UOG. Make sure to check it out. See there? Autism Strong. This has social media written all over it. You're going to see people pull fire engines. It's super, super fun. Please get involved. We'll see you there. And up in the CNMI, there is going to be a family fun day on April 20th from 11 to 2 at Mount Carmel School. Make sure to show up and have fun with your family because that's what it's all about. And informing you is what we do on News Nights. Now to your birthday shout outs. Which you can submit onto the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club on KUAM.com. Ethan Anthony Sablon Medina, happy 13th birthday to our now teenager mommy and brother say they love you so much. And happy birthday number six to Raina Pangalinen and to my baby girl, we love you, say your daddy, your mommy, and your bo boy. Ethan and Raina, we celebrate you today and we hope you have a wonderful 13th and 6th birthday all day long. That's your primetime show. Thanks for watching. I'm Nick Delgado. And I'm Destiny Cruz. Have a great evening and stay beautiful. It's the community that decides who gets to pull the brush strings and lead this island. Early on in the campaign season, people have said to me, my vote does not matter. So why should I vote? When you think about the answer to that question, think about what you see around you. Then ask yourself, who can I trust to make a difference? Half a day, I'm Nick Delgado. You're watching The Hub. In this episode, we begin by taking you to a submitting neighborhood where life for those living there is far from paradise. Wooden pallets, tarps, cardboard boxes, and a security camera? It's not just a pile on the side of the road. Eddie Garcia invited us in for a tour. You lived here for two months? Yeah, yeah. A tight space he calls home in a Tamuding neighborhood. How are things here, Freddie? I'm good with you. I'm good. What made you decide yeah, to start uh, building here? When I started building here uh, last two months ago, and then I collecting the what that the like uh, I asked for the koshules, uh, uh, what that market the pallets. pallets yeah, and then I make, make bill. before it's the uh, only bottom, but uh, every time the raining hard, uh, still leaking because uh, my it's not good. It's not and a full I, roof. Yeah, starting the fix good because uh, the material is already. Uh, I use for the, okay. for the, yeah, for the, and then I extend for this one for uh, my room. 
Freddy using the same material to build upward his two-story shack. It's cramped in here. Watch out. Gotta... No worries, I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, you good? Wow, it's tight. <laughs> yeah. This is where you sleep? Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how is it living here? That's only a room. Uh, yeah, sir. Just living room. Because it's election year. So we're trying to make our leaders see some of the things that they should prioritize. People like you. Freddie is currently working in construction, but even working for him comes with challenges of its own, from health issues to not being able to get proper medical care. He arrived to Guam in 2003 as an H2 worker, married a local woman, and had a child. How did you end up in this living situation? It's not a house. Yeah, yeah, like a, like a, just temporary, I built, and then my car is good already, and then... I go back my party uh, to work and then I find uh, like a one bedroom. Yeah. Any complaints? No, no, only the complaint uh, comes from the like the people going going over there. And over there is his neighbors living in similar makeshift homes. Is it safe? Like uh, yeah. Safe. Go here. Let's walk like, around. Uh, like uh, even the 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 guests, like uh, Japanese, uh, something people they go. The go tourists walk through here. You heard right. Visitors using this area, a clear eyesore, as a footpath to get easy access to the beach area. This is its own community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because they are, now, but, uh, last week they came from the, the owner, I don't know, the owner or the manager for the, this land. He has uh, to move out. Even mm -hmm. the, the cops, he said, yeah. That's why everybody got to move out. At least nine others call this place home. Jose Flores is among them. What's it like here, living uh, here? I mean, uh, just living safe, just trying to survive. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. What would you say to our island leaders to help people like you who are going through a hard time? Uh, yes, I really appreciate that if there is we get some help, you know. Uh, especially right now, you know, I, I, I always got a, a teach uh, this stroke, I, I'm disabled right now, so, uh, you know, uh, so I'm just trying to survive, you know, I mean, uh, you need help. Yes. The property surrounded by filth and a countless number of flies. Jose shows us where he sleeps. My survival room. Your survival room? Yeah. You have a bed? Yeah, actually, uh, a family, you know, uh. Uh, provide me bed, you know, because uh, I was used to be laying down in a, it's like a like, military cart, so. Yeah. How many, fa how many people stay here, do you think? Uh, I don't know exactly, uh, right now, uh, here, uh, with me, yeah, I think. But there's tra there looks like there's trash everywhere. I mean, not, I mean, uh, not very comfortable living conditions. Uh, I understand that uh, uh, pretty much we're, 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 we're trying to keep up cleaning things. I help clean around here, but I, yeah. I, I'm not really, you know, that normal to really move around and do what I'm supposed to do if I am really uh, You're in a wheelchair. Okay. Well, hopefully you can get the help soon. Yes, please, yes, we do. Uh, we're hoping that some would uh, help us, you know, uh, something more uh, uh, decent and, and uh, safe place to, to stay. Back out at Freddy's, we meet up with Philip Noré, his home neighbors at all. Twice complained and nothing's happened. He's built in the right of way. What are they trying to do? Make this look like a slum in Tamuni? And then the visitors I hear walk through here. Yes, they the do. Tourists. Yes. How long has this been a problem? Uh, more than I'd have to find out for my wife, but I think it's been a while. And they've created a, basically they're living in a dump back there. You can see that, right? What's the biggest concern? We did walk through there. What's the biggest concern? Um, the amount of people, et cetera, going through here. Plus, it's, it's when a, a storm comes, where do you think all this is going to go? It's going to go into my house, right? So... What would you like to say to our leaders? Because I know you did reach out to the mayor, but everyone else that's running for office, 
is listening. Well, I think they need to, I mean, these people need help, but they shouldn't be living out here and building illegal shacks right in the middle of a right-of-way yeah. in front of people's houses. If you've got a problem you think we should look into here on The Hub, let us know. Find us on social media at KUAM News or email us at reporters at KUAM.com. Coming up next, we head to two southern villages where multiple mayors are vying for those positions. Keep it here. You're watching The Hub. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Don't need to work, babe, keep the smile on your face The moments you can't replay And I'll be around Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you Calvo's Insurance, count on us for life only Pizza Hut lets you surround your favorite pizza with greatness. The one and only stuffed crust pizza tempts your taste buds with melted cheese stuffed inside that amazing crust. And at just $18.99 with one topping, the stuffed crust pizza is truly irresistible. So grab your slice of pizza perfection with cheesy goodness baked right into the crust. The stuffed crust pizza, just $18.99 with one topping. Only at Pizza Hut, the island's best. The race is revving up this decision 2024. More people in two southern villages tossing their hats in to be the next mayor, Hoggett and Santa Rita. No doubt those spots you can't miss when you enter the south. Welcome back to the hub. The campaign sides are fierce and at nearly every corner, two candidates taking on the incumbent in Hoggett while four others in the neighboring village of Santa Rita now hoping to lead as the longtime mayor there steps aside. More faces popping up in the mayor race, the neighboring villages of Hoggett and Santa Rita. Alan Rapola has most of the Santa Rita candidate signs on his property. It's a prime spot with heavy traffic entering and exiting his hometown. You have four. Yeah, I got four. Three of them, my nieces and nephew, and one is another opponent. It's a family affair. Yeah, something like that. That's why they're all up under my yard. That can make it tough. <laughs> it is. But what are you hoping whoever is victorious after this election year does for Santa Rita? To do a better job. I mean, no promises, but just do the job that's supposed to be done. Anything specific that you think the village deserves? Uh, speed bumps. Like this area right here. Nobody cares to stop. It's a three-way stop, but no one cares to stop. I got 14 cars that went through my house. All because they, they didn't stop. He wants the candidates to know. Treat everybody fairly, that's all. I mean, if you're a mayor for Agate or a mayor for San Rita and somebody asks for your help, does it matter what mayor you're from? Help. Because that's what they put you in there for. Four candidates vying for the spot as current mayor Del Alvarez decided to retire. I think it's time for me to retire and enjoy my, uh, the rest of my life. <laughs> you have four people coming for the seat that you've been in all these years. How does that make you feel? Well, that makes me feel good, so everybody wants to try and see what they can do to help the village. And yeah, I feel good about it. What would you say to those candidates? Well, all I'm going to say is work hard, keep your nose clean, and be honest to your people. The mayor adding, may the best candidate win. Cynthia says the number of candidates should spark voters' interest this election. Cynthia, what are your, what's your thoughts when you saw 
four new faces trying to be the mayor here. I know. I'm expecting only two. Both uh, the Democrat and the Republican. I'm a Democrat. Yeah. Registered Democrat. But I voted for Republican the last time because he showed something. Mm -hmm. what, what, what do you think whoever be, wins, what do you think they should prioritize for your village? The, the crime. Is it bad? I don't like that there's a lot of, you know, how the drugs is rampant. Break-ins. Yeah. So we're elderly and we're scared of, you know, somebody's going to break in on us at night. And we're careful. We hardly leave the house. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I'm i going to ask whoever is running for, for them, I'm going to ask them on how they would handle the crime, the drugs. That's, that's my priority. Terrence Uggen is also hoping whoever wins does better for his village. If they better the community, it's all good for Guam, you know. Um, what do you think should be the priority, or what do you hope will be the priority for your neighborhood? For our neighborhood, is, uh, just like maybe speed bumps around here because of a lot of speeding. You know, we don't need uh, carelessness around here because we got kids, family, and we want to keep each other safe. Maybe even like drugs around here, like uh, they should take action into that neighborhood watch probably. Uh, but it's it's been pretty good uh, around here lately. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Anything? And, and you plan to vote? Uh, yes, I do plan to vote. Why is it important for you to get out there and exercise that right? Well, to exercise uh, my right and to see uh, if anyone can step up to uh, take better care of the community and well. May the best candidate win. It's what several say in the races with the high participation, but participation works both ways. Get involved. Visit the Guam Election Commission in Tamuni or gec.guam.gov to find out how you can be involved in the election process to decide who you think should lead. And don't forget to head out to the polls on August 3rd to vote. Your Decision 2024 news also includes those in the CNMI. It's where we head to next after this break. You're watching The Hub. At Not Howie says Taco Bell only really hits after midnight, which is why I'm going to use the Cantina chicken menu to help him see the Taco Bell light. Mm, very juicy. That is <laughs> hi. The uh, food hits, right? Are you at Not Howie? Does it hit or does it not hit? I'd say it hits. Yeah, it does hit. I can't lie. Okay, but you did, maybe. The Cantina Chicken Crispy Taco isn't just for late night. Celebrate Mestramoro with Rooted, featuring different looks at our island roots, our customs, culture, and traditions. Catch this multi-part and multi-platform weekly series throughout March on KMU's and digital. Rooted is brought to you by Templa, now open in Agate and ready to serve up your local favorites. Your vote matters, but only if you show up. Whatever you decide, do it for you and for your community. Welcome back to The Hub. Let's take you now to Saipan, where we speak with young voters about the upcoming election and what matters to them. day and welcome to this special edition of CNMI Decision 2024. I'm your host, Tomas Manglonia, and we are the wonderful cafe Hafa Bean, where they have great drinks, food, and company, and this is where a lot of local people and tourists visit to have maybe some of the types of conversations we're going to be having today. So thank you so much to Hoffa Bean for what they do to our community, for our community, and also for allowing us to um, be here today and film this interview. Uh, where We're talking with the young voters of the CNMI, ages 18 to 35, the important voting block where in this midterm election, we've spoken to candidates who say that's who they're targeting and want to show up at the polls in November. And so we'll start with a few introductions. We do have one of our panelists online on Zoom who we'll show you in a second. So maybe Savannah, we'll just start with you. Introduce yourself, uh, maybe how old you are and uh, a bit of uh, any background you wanna share with the Saipan community and the Marianas community watching. Hi everyone, Hafidi Tiro. My name is Savannah De Los Santos. I am 27 years old. 
Um, and in terms of background, I do wear multiple hats. So I am still the current reigning Miss Northern Marianas. I also work as a sexual assault response team manager here at the Northern Marianas Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence. However, I will say that a lot of the views that I will have today is definitely not a representation of the organizations that I'm part of, but definitely just a, a representation of me as an individual. All right, Gio. Uh, half a day then to everybody. My name is Bonnie Gio Sagana. I am 19 years old. I am a student at the Northern Marianas College under the major of social work as well as nursing, and I am the Associated Students of the Northern Marianas College president. I do also want to state that any reflection that I give throughout this conversation is not a reflection of my own um, institute that I'm in, but just my personal uh, judgment as well. Okay, well, hi um, to all to all all of our fans in Guam and and CNMI. I, I I'm Ignacio and I am 30 years years old, so I'm the oldest one <laughs> among the amongst the uh, three of us. Um, I am a speech therapist, and I am uh, very fortunate to have this chance to speak and to be and to be to be amongst these these one these wonderful folks. Um, and as um, as the uh, previous two speakers said, I all that I'm going to share re represent my my views. It does not um, represent my work. It does not represent the um, folks that I work for, but my own views. All right. Thank you all for those disclosures as well. <laughs> I know it's sometimes difficult to speak so openly, but thanks for joining the conversation. And so. Uh, again, we're not here to talk necessarily about who you're supporting or what party you're a part of. Uh, we want to hear about the issues that matter to you. So uh, here's the first question. It's a big question. Uh, what issues matter to you in this election? Uh, and when you head to the polls in November, uh, some of you, I believe, are first time voters. Others might have voted, uh, voted before. Um, but what issues come to mind that you hope candidates discuss in the field? And uh, maybe, uh, Savannah, since you're online, we'll go ahead and just start with you again. Okay. Um, there are a lot of issues that definitely matter to me. Um, I know that when it comes to the work that I do, it's kind of everything that I drink, um, eat, breathe, and live. And so I work a lot with sexual assault and domestic violence and teen dating violence. Um, I definitely speak from a survivor advocate point of view when I say this, but the issues of sexual assault, sexual harassment, domestic violence, teen dating violence, child abuse and neglect, those are definitely issues that are super important to me. Um, I really believe that it really starts in the home. And oftentimes when it comes to trauma and how it's passed on, it plays a huge role in our community if we care about those issues. If we're addressing um, issues like sexual assault or domestic violence, I mean, even in terms of research and statistics, the numbers are really high. Um, so I believe it is like one in three women will experience some form of violence in their life. And I believe one in six men. And so even in terms of that, there are a lot of people within our CNMI community who are victims, who are survivors. Um, and I just really want to have people who are in office who care about those people and care about their well-being and just trying to get them the support that they need. All right, Ignacia, maybe we'll go to you next. Sure. So I've, I've really thought about, about this and I came up with the three, three S, S's schools, sa safety, and salopi. Schools because um, I just love school and I don't want to think about where I would be had it not been for the, for the schooling that I've received and all that I, that I have gone, I've gone through and learned. And so I believe that um, who, whoever wins in these, in these elected seats, I want them to support our schools because the more that our kids um, receive those experiences and those skills, and um, the more that they learn, then they will grow up and become the work the workforce that we will need to bring the the CNMI into the future. Um, and that and that that ha that happened with with us, right? We had all we all had gone through a school, and we've all um, achieved so much and we view we use those skills now to help to help those around us and that's my that's that's my wish for the young kids now 
for safe safety, every time, Tom, I, I open up my news apps and I look at the news from around the world. And it breaks my heart when I see news of um, crimes, of you know things that are just um, going really hor horribly wrong in the world. And every time I look at those head those headlines, and every time I you know read those um, pieces of news, it makes me feel grateful that I still feel safe here. This is home. This is where I. I live and I love being being here, but more than that, I feel safe here. Learn more by visiting votecnmi.gov.mp and head over to KUAM News' YouTube channel now for the full interview with CNMI youth voters. Next up on The Hub, the Guam Election Commission gives us important information for candidates here on Guam. Keep it here. Brian Dawkins, safety, a.k.a. Weapon X. Brian laughs at audibles, laughs. For there is nothing he does not anticipate. He is never caught off guard because his guard is always up. His skills of perception are honed like talons. Brian sees all. He knows all. Dominates all. His defensive prowess is feared the world over. The all electric Hyundai Ionic 5 with advanced safety and tech. Because even safeties could use a little more safety themselves. Search for your Hyundai Ionic 5 today. August 3rd is when you decide, so register to vote today. There's also still time if you are thinking about leading yourself and picking up a candidate packet. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of The Hub. I'm Nick Delgado. We close out with a visit now to the Guam Election Commission with Executive Director Marie Pangolin. And heads up candidates, this interview is for you. Stay safe, everyone. See you next time here on The Hub. Maria, thank you for joining us again this week on The Hub. So what's there? I'm sure we last week we spoke about what's important things for voters to know ahead of the election. Mm -hmm. What about the candidates? It's, I think, now less than a couple of weeks before the filing deadline on May 3rd. May 3rd is the filing deadline. The office will be open, and we will make sure that we will, anybody that's in the office by 5 o'clock, we will accommodate. But after at 501, we cannot accommodate. We have to be. We have to make sure that our candidates know to try to f uh, file your candidacy early. Mm -hmm. um, if there are any discrepancies, if there's a hiccup or anything, there's still time to fix it. If you when you file early, mm -hmm. um, so our candidates have been coming in. They've also been attending candidate seminars. Mm -hmm. So as you know, the Guam Election Commission hosts candidate seminars. It's every um, third Wednesday and Thursday of the month. Uh, on Wednesdays, it's at 5.30, and on Thursdays, it's at 2 o'clock p.m. Not and mandatory. It, not mandatory. Um, and the, the, the trend is they come back more than once. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of information to swallow at one time. Um, chapter 17 is the most common and most popular sex section. What is that? Campaign finance. Oh, so, yes. important. Yes, so so they, you know, so we, we have discussions on all that. Um, and like I said, uh, candidates have come more than once to these candidate seminars. Is a lot of them newcomers that you've noticed? I think so. Um, are, you know, I, if you go look across the island, there are a few uh, mayors that are not running. Um, and uh, at least one vice mayor that's not running. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there's quite a few, yes, there's quite a few newcomers. And for the Guam Election Commission, it says possibly a higher voter turnout. 
Wow. And have we been seeing more people come in to register, seeing as we are having new candidates yeah. in the race? Nick, what's really interesting for me, um, Pashano mentioned to me that our, our, our mayors, uh, mm -hmm. voter registrars, as well as our volunteer voter registrars, have been really busy. Um, and even our online voter registration has picked up a bit. So, yes, we're getting them. Uh, but, Nick, the most important is that all these new regis newly registered voters, yes. let's get our candidates to make sure that they show up on election day or for early voting. And so the filing of the candidates, they also have to make sure that they have all of their signatures and their petitions. And, yes. Um, so we, we have to, um, at, here at our office, at the counter, our staff will make sure we will uh, will make sure that the cam the the whole packet is complete. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not to accept incomplete packets. So if so, if a packet's not complete, typically the ca candidate will come back. We we will we will go through the whole packet. We will not accept it. We'll go through the whole packet and check what else needs to be what else is missing to so that they can come back and really file. Um, we will look at their candidate information card. We will look at all the petitions. The petitions must be duly signed by the, cir by the circulator, and uh, we need to make sure that there are enough signatures mm -hmm. that are required. And for the typical, Based on the race that they're Yes, ba for, for the typical mayor, it's 100 signatures. Mm -hmm. So they just need to turn in the, max, the minimum. Uh, they just need to have the minimum number of signatures. That's not to say that we will count all of them, but we, because the staff here will vet and make sure that uh, they're registered voters and they only sign, we will accept only, uh, we will accept the signature of a voter only the number of times that there are seats. For example, let me try to explain that better. If there's only one mayoral, if there's only one mayoral seat mm -hmm. up for the election, so Nick Delgado, who's from Melesu, can only sign one time. Okay. If Nick Delgado signs twice, the signature we will accept will be the, of the candidate who filed, who turned in their, their file here at the GEC first. First, first come, first, first serve yes, for that, okay. Yes. Not, not, it's not dependent on when Nick signed. Got it. It's dependent on when the candidate turned in his or her packet. And I'm seeing the list, because you guys post the list and it updates daily the spreadsheet of those candidates, those potential candidates that pick up a packet, that's quickly growing, but also the number of those that have since filed early. But what if May 3rd comes around and I bring, and I'm here, one of the new the candidates with my packet, but then there are some things that need to be addressed. And if it's not five o'clock yet, he or she can address it. If it's five o'clock, we're sorry. Very and important we... reminder to all those candidates out there, get it in as early as possible especially if you want to avoid not being accepted, right? Absolutely, yes. Wow. Uh-huh. Um, and also for the candidates, you know, one, our, one of our most important, uh, one of our most important sta uh, partners are the media, is mm -hmm. Nick Delgado and KUAF, seriously. And what happens is the more, um, the more visibility these candidates have, the better off they are. So with the candidate information card, we ask them to check off what kind of contact information they'd like us to make public. Okay. Okay. And a reminder for those out there, if you want to find out more information, if you're still contemplating to this day, if you want to run for office, or if you just want to register to vote, you can head over to the gec.guam.gov. We also have all the information similarly on kuam.com. And if you see this around town, a little QR code to help you get on your way. Maria, thank you so much for your time. We'll spend the next few weeks just unpacking what else the voters and the candidates need to know so that we're ready for the primary. Thank you.